We're going to spend a little time at a one-of-a-kind dinner on a farm right here in Northern California. I'll tell you all about that in just a moment. You know, we've all known for a long time that eating the right foods can help improve your health. And there's a good deal of concern about childhood obesity. But it's not always easy to make a direct connection to a specific diet or food group as being better for you. Organic, gluten-free? Many people, however, are making food decisions they consider to be beneficial. And some of those decisions start right here on the farm. Diners have shown up by the dozens for a unique event called Outstanding in the Field. Calling itself a restaurant without walls, the event sets up tables in farm fields and barns, serving up gourmet meals with local ingredients prepared by celebrated regional chefs. The aim is to reconnect diners to the land and the origins of their food by honoring local farmers and food artisans. You know, agriculture has the word culture in it, and uh, that's something that's cult culture is powerful. And if people can access that and uh, understand it and meet the people that are doing that work, it's it's substantial. It's it's inspiring, and and then it tastes good. So it's good. <laughs> you can't beat that. To get out and actually cook outside and, and meet people and talk and um, and just be out, you know, we're surrounded by fig orchards and stone fruit and the squash we're using today was grown here and it's cool. It's like, where'd you get that? Over there. <laughs> you know, isn't that fun? It's, it's really cool to do that. And the, the, the meat provider, his ranch is going to be here today. My fish provider, the ranch is going to be here today. It's, you know, there's a big connection. I can point to everyone that provided the food today, and that's fun. From May through November, Outstanding in the Field will host more than 80 such dinners in the U.S. and overseas. After a tour of the host farm, diners, culinary artisans, farmers, and growers sit down to dinner, sharing the bounty on the long table. The dinner tonight is being hosted here at the Cape Organic Farm in Northern California. Organic farming has seen a double-digit growth in the past 10 years, and the number of organic farming operations in the U.S. has more than doubled since the early 1990s. For the farmers here, the mission is not only growing organic produce, it's getting those crops to consumers. <laughs> It's a celebration of the tomato here at Cape Organic Farm in Northern California, complete with tomato tasting. Yeah, I didn't even realize there were going to be this many varieties, so I, yeah, I was kind of blown away. Some were just incredibly sweet, and others were more tart or acidic, and just, yeah, just full of, full, full of flavor. There's just a lot of nuances in the flavors, and I've never noticed that before, and it's a really great experience to be able to do that, spend the day out here and get to taste the complexities. The Farm's Tomato Festival is an annual event at the Cape Farm. It draws more than a thousand folks who show up for tomatoes, tasting, and tunes. The Cape Farm folks have good reason to celebrate their bright red tomatoes. Like the vines they grow on, the tomatoes are deeply intertwined with this farm family's success. How long will these produce fruit? So the harvest windows are like eight weeks, so they'll be kind of the first week is not very much, and then it slowly ramps up. Thaddeus Barsati is the chief farmer here. His parents, Kathleen Barsati and Martin Barnes, started this farm in 1976. They created a community-supported agriculture program in 1992 to sell produce. When the couple divorced, Kathy took ownership. The rumor is that my dad saw some thrown away heirloom tomatoes in the dumpster of a food service provider. And he said, wow, those are cool looking tomatoes and grabbed them and saved some seeds and we planted you know, a few rows of them. We grew 10 acres in 99 and my mom said, you know Thad, I think I could sell 20 acres of these tomatoes, but I just don't have the energy to do them, to plant them and harvest them and take care of them all. And I was at college and I said, you know mom, plant the 20 acres, I'll come back and help you that summer. That was actually the summer that uh, our mom passed away. She was sick, with, she had uh, breast cancer. So I took the farm over that summer with that 20 acres of tomatoes and we've been growing the program ever since. And so now we manage um, just under 100 acres of heirloom tomatoes. Every week she would do a recipe and, and um, news about the farm. And in 2000 she kind of introduced Noah, Thaddeus and I and said, you know, we still have the, that final farm news she wrote. Um, introducing us and saying, hey, your quality of the produce delivered right to your home is going to stay the same and, and they're going to continue it on. And I think that's been an important part, too, as she passed away, the, the four of us 
really bonded together and said, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna take this to the next level. We were definitely left with the choice of do we wanna keep the business going or not? And we unanimously decided, no, we're gonna keep this going. Since taking over, Thaddeus, Noah, and Freeman have taken the farm to a size that they admit their mother could not have imagined. Besides selling produce wholesale to restaurants, today they operate the largest community-supported agriculture program, or CSA, in the country. Customers pay for deliveries of fresh produce directly to their home. They deliver in northern and southern California. We're delivering uh, throughout California, uh, most most populated areas, and I think the key is is to really support local and support organic. It's going to be seasonal. It's going to be as local as possible. The family works with other organic farmers across the state to make sure the CSA produce deliveries have various options. The brothers admit that becoming the largest CSA in the country with 500 employees and farm properties across the state was not in their parents' original. Plan. I really kind of wonder what, what she'd think. You know, she had some amazing ideas that, that we're, we're still doing the same business model that she developed in 1992. Um, we're, we're growing the same crops. We're, we have the same home delivery concept. We're just, you know, took her, her basic concept and, and just um, expanded the, the distribution and the size. And so, Really, I think if she looked at us today, she would see her fingerprints everywhere. They believe that despite their size, working together as a family and with other farms ensures that they're sticking to their parents' original mission. The family holds on to the belief that directly connecting with customers is key to their family's farming future. So our, our um, children are uh, growing up on the farm and um, we're wondering and how they're going to fit in. The reality is, is that we've taken a great thing our parents started, and we're delivering it to more people. The real challenge is when our kids get it, you know, what are they gonna do? So we're thinking a lot about that and watching the kids and realizing that they need to have good work, work ethic and understand how it works so when they get it, that it's gonna stick around for them to give to their kids.